Hello, I'm Jerry McKee with Janie Freelance. And I'm Sophie Mitchell, director and videographer. And Sophie's going to help today directing me where to stand and where to go. And uh, she's good at that. Uh, I get a little lost and she directs me back. So I'm glad she's helping me today. And today you're going to think, are we in Hollywood? Are we on a, a set where John Wayne and the Western set or maybe out in the Midwest? No, we're right here in Union County. And we got a hidden secret here and we're gonna have the owner walk you through what you're about to see. We're here at the Wildwood Ranch, right here in Union. And you're gonna be surprised at what you see. So stay tuned and we're gonna have Aubrey, the owner, he's gonna walk us right through it and take you to each step of the way. We're here at the best place, hidden secret in Union County. And we have Aubrey here that's going to walk you through this town, this western town. Aubrey, tell just a couple minutes here what, what your vision was here. Well, it started out to build a cabin out in the country. And I built a building. I made it want to look old and western. And then I decided it looks so good. I want to build another building. And then here we are, 19 buildings later. 19 buildings. And he's going to take us on a journey through the West. And hey, if you got a wedding, and that's what, he has a lot of weddings here, and it is perfect for that. So let's take a trip with Aubrey showing us this wonderful hidden secret in Union County. This is our saloon. Come inside, I'll show you what it's got. Well, this is made up like the old Western days with the uh, brothel upstairs and uh, which is not really a brothel it's just you know part of the western days that they had so you really got this made real nice for uh, uh, just to come in sit down and uh, people to meet and it, it really looks looks great and only thing modern I see is the TV and some of the other stuff there but uh, everything else is pretty much uh, primitive okay well let's go to the next building see right. what it looks like restaurant most of these buildings I named after somebody, a friend of mine. Shane's restaurant, he's my buddy, we like to cook. So I named the restaurant after him. Yeah. Well, how many uh, people does your restaurant seat in here? About 40. About 40, wow. Brings the good western, I see you guys have, uh, uh, Look like a fireplace, not a fireplace, but a stove. Yeah. And a, and a crockers. You've got some neat things on the walls and uh, that, that brings back the, the old Western days. Yeah, I try to be selective about the antiques I put up and make them work with the air and the time and so everything works together. Okay. Well, we'll go look at your next building. The next building's a butcher shop. Once again, I named it after a friend of mine. Um, you can have a look inside here, see where we cut the meats prep everything. So you got a full service kitchen inside. Yes sir. That's uh, uh, actually it looks a lot better and a lot of restaurants I've been in and uh, equipped with a lot of uh, nice equipment. Yeah, it's something I really enjoy doing is cooking so when I built, built this place I wanted a real commercial kind of kitchen that I could experiment and play in. Well you did a great job in, in putting all the commercial stuff in. I just like the, the way it looks. You got room to work. So you, you put a lot of thought in that, didn't you? Yes, sir. So. We'll go to the next room. I this like these big table and chairs right here. Now you can really sit up and, and sturdy in those. Yeah, uh, yeah you're not gonna break those sitting in them. The next room is a drugstore named after my wife. She's a pharmacist. I built this building just for her to display antiques and uh, to do anything she wanted to do with this town. She's got her own room. Now she's a pharmacy in Union or? She worked for Sam's Club in Pineville. Oh, okay. Wow. We got some, a lot of antiques in here. We shop for, for drug stores and old bottles, scales. We you know a lot of uh, kids today won't know what that black thing is hanging on there with that roadie dial. Yeah. <laughs> we had one in our house growing up just like that. 
And then we got fancy and got the real long cords where we can stretch yeah. it a little longer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know your wife had a lot of input into decorating and, and helping with this here. Yeah, she enjoyed doing this. Yeah. Well, great. That's, you've made a whole complete town out of your imagination, right? Yes, sir. You got to have, to be a town, it's got to have everything. next building is our first hotel. We built this at first, one of the first buildings, so we'd have somewhere to stay when we we're here working. It's only got four bedrooms in it and a bathroom. Now is this made uh, just like the old style uh, hotels that you, you'd come in in the western days and... Yeah, come in and check the... in. Okay. Get your blanket and head on upstairs. Now, so does people actually will, will be sleeping here uh, once eventually? It's approved, once the county is finished. Yeah. So that would be a great thing, I mean really authentic where they can spend a night here and, uh, and if they've got a wedding the next day or that rehearsal, uh, a lot of our town guests won't have to uh, go to a motel room, all that will be I guess in packages that y'all will be having. Exactly, uh, there's no hotel rooms in uh, Union County, what I understand. Yeah, most of the time they're filled, but nothing like this. This really gives an authentic of the, if you're going, if you're going to do a western wedding, this is the way to do it. The next building is our, our Grand Hotel. I built this. It's one of the last buildings I built to have more room for people to stay. Now this reminds me of the, almost like the, in the Western days where the guy stands behind the counter there and sign, you sign in the book and uh, he pays us two bits, whatever like that, and gets his, his bath. <laughs> yeah, gets, pays his money for his bath. And the, of course, the wonderful piano that they played back then. They didn't have too many instruments back then, just a guitar and a, a piano. Now, how many rooms do you have here? 28 total. 28, wow. Uh, is it like twin beds? Is it double? It's uh, uh, queen size beds in every room. Okay. We got a meeting hall in the back of the hotel here, too. Can we walk back and see? Yeah, go ahead. There. Go ahead, I'll let you lead away. Long hallway. Yeah. This is our small meeting hall you can rent. It's got your basics. Basic um, small kitchen. Well, this could be a real good planning room for uh, the wedding party or you know that evening exactly. to, to sit down and, and, and give feedback on uh, what they're going to do and what they want to do. And plus. It's good to have a good meeting here besides that, just uh, corporates and uh, want to get a getaway to come out and in a wonderful uh, country outdoors where they're used to the city. I mean, what a what an asset it would be to some corporations to do that. Yeah, I've had a lot of response from corporations and companies want to come out and have employee retreats, yeah. team building meetings. Right, that sort of thing. And, and that's a big in corporations now is team building. Yes. Uh, have different activities. I know you got ski shooting here. Yeah, we're gonna have tubing down the river and we'll put you in here and pick you up in Lockhart, tubing and kayak, and that's coming real soon. Wow, that, I might have to come out and do that myself. I'd love to do that, so. Uh, when you get ready for that, I'll just give me a call and uh, maybe we take a trip with the cameras down the, down the river to see, That'd let people great. see exactly what it is. Yeah. All right. This is wonderful. And I know she got some pictures on the wall over here of some uh, heroes growing up. Roy Rogers, Gabby Hayes. Yeah, I try to keep it authentic. Anything I can find. I don't know if you want to see what one of these little rooms looks like, but that's, I got one right, that's, model set up here. Yeah, that's, uh, 
even with the theme with the pillows and the covering. And one of the things that people probably ask is, uh, is you know, they're talking about, well, is it, we know that it's thinic and stuff like it. Is it air conditioned? Is it heated? Every building is air conditioned and heated. Okay. Except the barn. Right. The big facility. Well, that's, that's, that's a good thing, though, because a lot of people, that's the first thing they want to ask. You know, they, they want to go way out and, and rough it, but they don't want to rough it too much. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> I don't either. Our next building here is the dry goods. It's where we sell things we make here, sell things we buy and resell. Stuff you'd need for your experience here, whether you're camping or staying in the hotel. Few small souvenirs you can take something back with you. So some of the canned goods, do, do you can them yourselves? Or? We do some here and, and we buy some to resell. Do you buy some local? Yes. Well you know that's this is a great thing to know because you know when you get to a uh, motel or you go somewhere like it you're always forgetting something so you got it conveniently here. We try to cover it all. And I love the old cash register too. That's I remember that in my days growing up and yeah. having a big cash register like that. Wow. Um, something to look at. I named it after my father. He had a hardware store in Fort Mill for 38 years, and he closed up, and I missed it so much. I kind of made a model of what his store looked like. Contacted some of his old vendors. We got together and uh, put this put this together. Hmm. Hey, hey, Dale. Just a second. So, so your father, Steve. Yes. He had his store while you was growing up, and, and this is amazing down here. I mean, to see this, all this hardware here that uh, I know you use a lot of it yourself too. So it's convenient to have it here because it's so far to go for anything. Right. Now, are you going to have? Uh, uh, I know some places have like when somebody got a camper that comes down or something like that or they can park it. Yeah, yeah, we, we have three campsites now. I'm planning on putting in 20 more. I bought the adjacent lot beside us, another 20 acres, and I'm going to make it a campground. Well, see, that's going to be convenient for here because you don't know when you're camping, something's going to go wrong. That's and right. So they'll have a, a not far to go. So they won't even have to leave the premises. That is fantastic. I, I was looking at this hardware earlier, and he was. I was looked in the other room and, and getting ready to put more in uh, down to the, the next level. Uh, and it just amazes me that now some of the things here. Um, did you ever did you get anything as, as out of your father's hardware that you got at, to? At the time he closed, I wasn't really looking for stuff and didn't really care that much about it. Right. But I got a few items. Um, the old seed display that was wow. originally from his store. It was there when he moved in 38 years ago, and let me let me rephrase that. He's been closed for 10 years. He was there for 38 years. He was there, and then it was there. It came before he came in, so it's it's a real old old piece. Well, see, a lot of people don't realize that back then that was almost like going to the grocery store those seeds. Yeah, and and people buying it and. People today, farmers, they come in and uh, e even us rural people that uh, are used to living in the city will come in and want to plant something, think we're farmers, and uh, we'll buy seeds still yet today. So it's, it's a little better experience than just going to Lowe's and picking up a pack? Or... It is. It is. I mean, it's more unique. The next building is the meeting hall. This is a Wildwood meeting hall. It's set up for small corporate events team building like we talked about earlier. How old do you think this tr trunk is right right here? And I have no idea. It looks real, real old. It's, uh, you know, like it came over from a ship somewhere or maybe on a stagecoach. Well, stagecoach used to run through Union County. And uh, who, who knows, I, that would be a, a good uh, piece to know about. Nice to know the history on it. Yeah, so they can have Corporate meetings here, with the convenience of I know you got the screen there and all for uh, for corporate meetings. They can uh, hook up projectors and anything here they can do just like it was at the office. Exactly. And that's again going back to the team building. Yeah, we have wireless internet for PowerPoint productions and 
um, just about anything you need. Okay. Uh, even wireless internet. Yes, sir. Well, that's something they didn't have in the West, did they? It's hard for people to live without it now. It though. is. It is. Too dependent upon it. Yes. Now, see, so you got the chief Indian. Yeah, a friend of mine hand carved that. Wow. What, what was his name? Ed. Um, but it, he, did, his last name. He, he did some detail work on that, didn't he? Yeah, he did very well with it. Yeah. Now, the name, uh, Aubrey, that you got up there, I like the way you played on words on that one. Grand Ole Aubrey. Grand Ole Aubrey, yes. This is set up for a band. These doors open. The band plays in here. People sit up here and watch. It works out perfect with the lights and the acoustics of the band coming out. There's a room for the band to get ready. Then they can come on. Now what's up upstairs of it? Uh, I don't have anything upstairs right now. Right now? Okay. But you, that's more things that you can add to it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Down there's our tractor shed and lumber yard. We build anything here we can. All the signs are handmade here. Swings, chairs, everything we can make, we make here. Now, I, I know you make the signs and, you, and uh, if you, all these, these, these are great looking swings. And, I, and uh, when I went and looked at swings for my front porch, uh, I went to an Amish which they built it almost exactly like you got it right here. And uh, do you <clears throat> look in the future or, or do you have now the where you make sign where people say, I'd like to have a sign made like that or I'd like to have a swing made like this that, that you would sell it to them? I'm gonna look more into doing swings and that sort of things. Um, I think it'd be something good to do during the winter to make money here, using okay. some local people that need jobs during the winter. Right, because that way you can, <clears throat> I know myself looking at some of these signs that you made, it, it's really unique, and especially the swings. I, I believe you're gonna have a good market there also. Now the, now the question I've gotta ask you, is the real gold mine down there? Well, we have, uh, a friend of mine has a dredge, and we put it in the lake, uh, excuse me, the river, and we, we ran it for about a half a day and come up with a uh, vial, vial of gold. Wow, a small, small vial, but um, there is gold in the Packlet River, and there was a lot of gold mines around. Who we have here? This is Jude. This is my son. He just woke up. Hey, Jude. He's mad because he woke up by himself. Oh. You can pick Come him up. Here. Yeah. You all right? Yeah. Now, uh, I know people don't know this. I, I talked to a gentleman uh, the day for yesterday that's... Uh, that I'm doing a, a piece on, and the people don't know it's a hundred and about 190 gold mines in Spartanburg County. Yeah, there's a lot. And there's some in Union County, and yes. there's some in York County, and Hickory Grove area, and yeah. Sharon. So people say, well, you know, I built a house on a gold mine. Well, you might have. I have people want to come after the storms and after the river floods, and want to look around huh? uh, yeah. for gold. Yeah. Now, this, this is for people can say it's photo booth or? This room's more for playing than anything. People come in and put on, put on wigs, put on outfits, different props, dress up, make pictures and play around. Wow, this is pretty neat. Now, now this is neat. What, is, it, is this, was this built for this or is this something you built? I bought this from a friend of mine who's had it a long time in his bar in Charlotte. It's out of a 1900 movie prop where they showed the horse and the, the cowboy riding from the side. They showed this much and it still works. It moves and just like it did. Wow. You know, it made things back then to last a long time. Yes. So do you have people actually get on it and do it? Yeah, especially if there's any alcohol involved. That's the first thing you want to do is jump on the horse. <laughs> jump on the horse. I see you have props over here that uh, people put on and well, wow. one of my heroes there, John Wayne. Have your picture made with John Wayne. Yeah. And of course, if you're bad, um, you go to jail, right? That's right. <laughs> this is just a prop. We got the real jail up the street. All right. That's one of my favorites right there. We might have to get Sophie to try that out. Yeah. Say hey to everybody. Hey. 
Thank you for coming to Wildwood, but you got a different name for this town, don't you? Yeah. What do you call it? Jewtown. Why do you call it Jewtown? I call it Because that's your name, right? Yeah, Jude. And you think you own this place, don't I you? I call it Jude Roddy Tosa. Jude Aubrey Roddy Coat. That's your name, isn't it? Yeah, not a Jewtown's name. It's Jewtown's name. <laughs> he yeah. renamed it. <laughs> This is set up to have people sitting around, chairs in the middle, and watching the band. Yeah, they can sit in the swings and just relax and enjoy it. A little dance area here if they want to dance. Now the seats here is unusual too. You put tractor seats. Yeah, I called it the tractor bar. So I figured I'd have some tractor seats in it. That's great. The, there has been a couple weddings here. Took down the end swing. The preacher stood at the end. The bride and groom came in here. And all their friends were along the sides. Oh. Worked out really well for uh, for a smaller wedding. Well, you got anything that you can accommodate the small weddings to the large weddings. So that's and everything you need to do them both. I mean, we're we're all all inclusive. We're at the jail, the sheriff's office. This is where we put the people at act up, we'll put them in a barred room and lock the door. Well, I see you got beds in there. And, uh, you know, if someone didn't have a place to stay, they might act up just to get a good, good bed to sleep in. That's right. <laughs> As Barney Fife would say, is your maximum security facility, yes. With the keys hanging where you can reach them. Hey, horse. And I noticed the, the, the phone here. I've actually got the original one of those in my house that my uh, wife's mother and her grandmother had. The one with the real generator in it? Yes. Uh -huh. So this is your post office. Now, do you uh, get mail here or? No, no this... mail. It is the, the post office in the in the bank, there's a vault in the back. Kind of unique what's inside our vault. Oh, you want to show us? Let you follow him around there and see what's in that vault. Inside the vault, you'll find something kind of unusual a bed. Kids love staying in it, sleeping inside the vault. So this, so this really adds another room that they can, when you're ready for people to stay here like theme that. Theme rooms, that, yes sir. Uh, they have a, and the air condition too, so perfect. We'll go to the next room. And uh, this right here is the calculator that, uh, actually you make checks on that from the bank. Uh, sort of writing them out and computerizing them. You just put in the amount and you emboss the paper check. That's supposed to keep people from uh, <sighs> duplicating, counterfeiting it. <laughs> and I like this here too. See, telegraph office. And I uh, just you got a little bit of Morse code to uh, work this. And But the person behind there, they was an the expert in it. So the faster you talk, they can still Click, 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 click. No town's complete without a barber shop. You gotta have some, one of everything. And it's a, a functional barber shop with everything you need. It's also a theme room with a bed in the back. So I can stay here as well. So with someone uh, having a wedding and they have a hairdresser person they can actually come here and put their fix their hair and stuff like that, couldn't they? It's air conditioning, it has its own sink and um, everything you need to uh, do hair. And yeah, make them, make, make them look pretty, yeah. Or they can cut a man's hair. I guess they could do that too, couldn't they? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. The next room is our bingo parlor. Tables and chairs so you can sit down and play bingo. It's always been one of my favorite favorite games to get a lot of people involved. Well, bingo was popular 
back in the Western days. People don't realize where it originated, but of course originated from in Egypt and that area there with the, uh, call it out, they named theirs a little bit differently, but. Next room is the gambling hall. Once again, I named it after a, a good friend of mine. He taught me how to gamble. Jim Shipley? Shabley. Shabley? Wow. We don't really have real gambling here. It's all it's all for play. Right. For playing for fun. Yes. But it's uh but but it, I love the tables. Now did y'all did you build the tables yourself? I built three of the three of the five I built. Over Ooh. here in the corner you got your cage where you exchange your money for coins and tokens. Wow. The famous goose. I guess that's the goose that laid the golden egg. Yeah. <laughs> now you come in here and play for fun and just see uh, see if you win or not? Or yeah, see who ends up with the most chips at the end of the night. Yeah. This is our barn where we have wedding receptions and large, large meetings. How many people is the uh, does this facility here hold? About 80. It could probably be had some, it could probably tighten up, maybe maybe seat 100 if it wow. needed to. In here, we got, a, we got a bar, all the tables, place where the bride and groom sits in front of the, in front of the wall, the wall decor. We have a buffet area here, a place for the cake. You can shift this around and make part of it a dance floor, a place for a DJ. Now these windows, I see this is open down here. Is these windows open? Yeah, all the way around the windows open. So they can really look at outside uh, the trees and the beautiful. Yeah, and you can get, a, get some air. Yes. This is the only building that isn't cooled. That's the bathroom and the kitchen. I don't know if you want any of that. So or you got the kitchen it, where they can yeah, like a catering kitchen. Oh, okay. It's a good sized kitchen, yes. Yeah. So again, you got a full service kitchen just about down here for anyone that's uh, either catering their own or for caterers that come. Now, that's the question I have for you also. Uh, do you do catering do you, you do you uh, offer the catering services the only way we feel comfortable doing the catering right now is if it's about 30 people or less right. just because we're not very experienced in it and we want to learn how to do it right before we jump out there and take on a lot of people okay because I know a lot of people sometimes they ask that's the question they want to know if you do the catering if you uh, if, uh, other things uh, now do you have a, a list when you have people come and ask about packages they might want to ask you uh, uh, about the DJs, about other uh, performers and stuff that, that go along with our wedding. Uh, do, do you carry a list of... Uh, yeah, we got a list of DJs, we got a list of camera people, um, caterers, anything else you might need, video and drone okay. shots, we have, uh, we have all that to give you. Yeah, well Sophie's a professional uh, pilot in drone, she got a pilot license in flying drone, which you have to with the FAA, and uh, so she's a uh, very good experience of that. Good. Maybe we'll use her some. Okay. Now, if someone wants to get married, and they said, yeah, I'd really like to get married in a chapel or a wedding facility. Now, you have that on premises too, right? We got it all covered right here. This is the church chapel. You can get married here. We got it set up with pews and a place for the preacher. Wow. Now. This is beautiful stained glass you got in here. We have uh, stained glass similar to that in a church that uh, I pastor. And uh, it just, that light comes in makes it unique. Yeah, definitely. Because real authentic of the, of the church. Now you, you've got a regular piano in here for someone to play the piano. And uh, of course the pulpit there. Now, how many people with a chapel seat? The chapel's kind of small. It only seats about 40 people. Okay. Well, that's good for small weddings. 
Yeah, it's so some of the larger weddings that people stood at the door and watched it, and then they could just walk over to the to the barn for the reception, and they're kind of all together. Right. So if you have a huge crowd, and of course get married over there, but if there's a smaller wedding, then you got the perfect chapel right here. Well, I'm Jerry McKee, and you've now seen the hidden secret of Union County. Uh, we're going to put up the address, phone number, if you want to get in. Uh, contact with Aubrey, Aubrey to uh, uh, book an event or find out more information about this wonderful place that's hidden down this little valley. And Aubrey, I appreciate you letting us Thank come you. by I and doing this. Out. And uh, we are, we're just, I'm just very, very impressed, I'll tell you. And uh, so we're going to get this out on social media and we hope you get a lot of calls and just business galore here. And we wish you well because you've got a, a definitely a unique place here. Thank you. I Thank appreciate you. that. Okay. All right, now you have found Union County's hidden secret. And we've got some more things to bring you uh, on this channel here and uh, down home in Union County. And we want you to stay tuned because there's some other things going to be going on here. When he gets ready to do the white rafting, the kayaking, we're going to go downstream with him with the camera to uh, let you see what it's like and the thrill of it. And maybe the thrill of uh, shooting skis. Now, Sophie, are you just tell me a little bit about your ski shooting. Tell us what, what you told me on the how you ski shoot. Oh, um, when I was little, I would go to the shooting range and there wouldn't be anywhere to put targets up. So I would get old shotgun shells that people had left out and I would shoot those stacked up on a hill one by one and that was my, that was my ski shooting. Yeah, no, no. If anybody can skeet shoot with a 22 rifle, uh, you don't want to mess with Sophie. She's, she's an expert shot at that. <laughs> so, well, thank you for watching. I'm Jerry McKee. I'm Sophie Mitchell. And we will see you on our next episode. Have a good day.